it's the second game of the finals between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana at the Freestyle Chess 2024 in Weisenhaus. Magnus Carlsen ready for match two looks of the relaxed finals. in the Good chair, but he is Please quietly the observing the position. What will be his first move? The players shake hands and, you know, players can start. I think D4 played on some boards, E4 played on some boards. You generally want to control the center, open up your pieces. This is chess 960 and the players are thinking right from move number one. You can see there. Magnus really getting involved in the position. This is the beauty of this format that you don't know what the best first move is. But there are some things which are normal. One idea you can't, you don't want to do is push your A or B pawn because you're not opening up any piece, nor the queen, nor the rook, nor the bishops. The knights can always jump out from B3 and C3. And that's why the logical moves here should be D4, E4, maybe F4, G4 as well. Let's see what Magnus does. He goes for g4. And that too, after nearly two minutes of thought, he's played g4 and he's opened up his queen and attacking this pawn. Fabiano does not respond in the best way. He plays c6. And you know, he could have actually castled here and the king could have defended and this might have been a better move. But with c6, now Magnus long castles. <laughs> he just improves his position. He's like, you know, my king is well placed here. I'm completely fine with it. And white is already doing very well. G5 by Caruana is trying to gain space. But now Magnus has an excellent move here. H4, exactly what a nice move. If you take here queen H4 and this is weak. So Fabiano has to play H6 now. But you can already sense that white is on the offensive on the king side. Now Magnus controls the center with his pawn push to d4. A very, very good move. Also, e4 would come up next. d5 played by Caruana. Trying to gain space in the center and which is the logical way to continue. How does Magnus play next now? He needs to bring his knights out. But he first plays his pawn to e4 which is a very useful move. Because if you take here... He will most likely bring his knights out and then take this pawn on e4. And this is clearly a great position. Now, Caruana, long castles. He controls his d5 square with his rook and also hopes to put pressure on the d4 pawn. Magnus defends his d4 pawn with his knight and says to Fabi that I have more space. I have better piece development. What are you doing? Caruana brings his knight to c7 and you can see with every move, white pieces are slightly more active. So the knight is on b3 and now the other knight comes to c3. Fantastic chess here by Magnus, just following opening principles, develop your pieces, control the center. Caruana is trying to play solidly. This is now a Karo Khan with all his pawns there. But Magnus can continue the offensive here. And he plays this very nice move. I love it. Bishop d2. With pressure here, he's forcing black to take. Otherwise, he's going to take on g5, take on h8, and then take this pawn on g5. So it has to be done carefully here. Bishop e7 played by Karuana. He simply defends his pawn here. But at the same time, he's threatening to take this pawn. And Magnus goes f4. Look at this. Five pawns in a line. And actually, the best move for Caruana is to take this. I know it actually spoils the structure, but he should do it. Instead, he goes knight d7. And that allows Magnus to start clarifying the situation in the center. He takes on d5. Very calm move. And then black now has a decision to make whether to take with the e-pawn or the c-pawn. Fabi takes back with the c-pawn. And in a way, he's freed the c6 square. So the knight can go to b8 and then to c6 and try to put pressure here. Magnus takes on g5. So he's now clarifying the situation in a big way. Takes and you push your pawn next and create a passer. This is completely terra incognito. Like you don't know which 
position this is but you can sense it that white is getting better coordinated here now fabi brings his knight to b6 maybe not the best move we spoke about this idea of knight b8 to c6 but the knight comes here maybe he wants to go to the c4 square that's his idea he plays queen at 6 and blockades that passer with his queen but the queen is never a good blockader and now magnus goes rook f1 again simple chess and when you look at Magnus's games, you will notice that one of the things he does brilliantly is that he cares about each and every piece that he has. Rook goes to f8. He maybe at some point wants to go f5 break. But caring about each and every piece, again, queen comes to g1 and the queen improves itself here. It's on a better square than on h1 and you will see why. Bishop comes to c6. And now, which is the piece that is not doing much for white? It's this bishop. It's not doing much. And look at what Magnus does. Bishop e1. He wants to put the bishop on g3 on this long diagonal. Bishop d6. Played. And now, Magnus goes bishop to g3, offering a trade of the bishops here. Take on g3. Queen takes g3. And these dark squares in black's camp suddenly start looking a bit loose. Knight comes in to c4 and, you know, Karuana is trying to put some pressure here. A good idea is to take, take, play knight d2 and this line which gives white a big edge. But instead, Magnus goes rook e1. And this gives Fabi some fighting chances because he can now move his knight back. And that's exactly what he does. Is Karuana making a comeback here? Whoever wins this is going to take the title. Knight c5. And now Karuana needs to strike in the center with f5. That is an important move. And he does it. f5. He is one of the best players for a reason. Able to find this critical move. Magnus goes in with his queen. And now Fabi must play knight c4 back or push his pawn to f4. But he makes an error. He comes here to e4. But it's not an easy move now. The idea here, e4, what a move by Magnus. You know, Fabi's idea was to take, take and push the pawn. And then the knight was had no good square to go. But now it could go to b5. So he takes and pawn takes. This is not a good exchange because now, he, although white's king looks a bit weak, but the position is now clearly in white's favor. Magnus takes on f8. And if you take back with the rook, that's the best idea here. He must take back with the rook. But he blunders now, takes with the queen. And queen takes g5 is already a good move. There is There are other moves as well. Rook f1 looks tremendous. But he plays the move now. Queen takes c7. Fantastic move. And with this, look at that. He's going to fork now. On e6, There is a, it's a queen sacrifice, but you're instantly getting it back. He takes on e6 with a check. And now the queen is going to be taken off. And we will reach an endgame. And that endgame needs to be properly assessed. Because after king d6, knight f8, rook f8, pawn moves forward to h6. And now, this pawn on h6 is way stronger than black's pawns. Which means that black is clearly better. a6 played here. And now, h7 is the idea. Oh, he takes another pawn. So, Magnus Carlsen is just chopping off pawns. Fabiano wants to trade the bishops, which is actually a good thing for him. Because if the bishops go away, you know, the pawn on h7 wouldn't be protected by the bishop. Rook check. And now the king goes back to d7. And how is Magnus going to continue? I think taking the bishops makes a lot of sense. So he takes. Bishop takes bishop. Pawn takes. And now you take the pawn on g4. And yes, from being a pawn down, now Magnus is a pawn up. And now it's very important to go to d2. Not to b2, because on b2, the king won't be active. So you go to d2. Check. 
check and now the king can actually go to e1 let's say oh he goes to d1 which is logical uh, and now he's threatening to put the rook behind the pawn and start pushing it so fabiano puts his rook behind the passed pawn and now magnus gives a check king comes up and there's another check which will come in perhaps oh no he pushes the pawn to h7 and white's pawn is much stronger here on h7 square uh, and b6 but how to win this position is the question because do you try to actually get your king up here well that's what magnus is trying to do is slowly moving his king and that's why karuana tries to get some play rolling because otherwise he would simply be lost the white king would come here and then move upwards and so king b5 but now magnus can save his pawns with c3 exactly and if the black king tries to enter here you can give a check and this rook is beautifully placed it will control c3 it will control h7 and that is exactly what is needed king goes to d3 and now the king comes to f1 so the rook defends the pawn here the rook defends the other pawn here king e3 and now king goes to g1 attacking the rook rook moves back and i think the next stage is ready king comes up to g2 yes and the king is ready to go boom 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 and it's queening here mm. karuana cannot stop this from happening magnus carlsen came up with this idea of the freestyle chess goat challenge and now is going to take the title back home handshakes there magnus carlsen is the champion he's won another title the first ever edition of weisenhaus freestyle chess goat challenge goes to magnus carlsen that is a big big result here and right from the opening move number 1 magnus took the advantage with g4 c6 and then hung on to it karuana played well in this tournament to finish second but clearly when it comes to this form of chess it feels like magnus is really really very strong because there's no theory you have to play from the scratch and he really loves doing that we have seen this here and his first move today was a very strong one where his opponent could not respond i also like how both the players two of the best in the world world number 1 and world number 2 spend time with each other discussing because you know it's not easy that these players get someone to analyze with who are at their level and so when they get a chance to analyze with each other they enjoy it and that is what you can see both magnus and fabi just analyzing with their hands and words not moving pieces just sometimes pointing at a square and very cool here